Zechariah chapter 1, verse 18. Going into these visions. Place in the Bible where you got to say, I don't know. And I lifted up my eyes and saw, and behold, four horns. And I said unto the angel that talked with me, What be these? And he answered, These are the horns which have scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. Now, horns in the Bible of many things it pictures, it pictures the antlers of an animal, it pictures power, it pictures kings. There's also one called the little horn, which is the Antichrist. There was the blowing of a horn, a ram's horn. And saying that these four horns, Judah is back in the land after Babylon won. The Chaldeans too drove them out. Assyria drew Israel north out. We've also read in the Bible through our study, I think with Obadiah, that even Moab, I mean, excuse me, Edom, came in and was helping to drive the Jews out, being happy to say, hey, the land's ours. And we go to Daniel, Daniel chapter 8, verse 20, scripture with scripture. We're not in a hurry to say, oh, look, we did another chapter. We're going to look at the scriptures. We're going to open the King James Bible. We're not going to mess with no word. Because if we mess with the word, we will lose the cross reference. Now look with Daniel, to give us an idea of horn. The ram which thou sawest has two horns. There's a ram, two horns. The two horns are the kings of the media and Persia. The rough goat is the king of Grecia. The great horn that is between his eyes is the first king. And you go up and read about kings and kingdoms. So, I am not going to first to be putting that, all right, it's definitely Babylon, Assyria, Edom. But it says these horns, four of them, scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. That would be Assyria, that would be Babylon, that would be the Chaldeans, and I'm guessing, 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 Esau. I am not going to tell you I had the answers of Zechariah. I'm just going to give you the scripture, lay it out, and may the Lord bless. Okay, now we go more. And he showed me four carpenters. And your typical worldly carnal creature is going to go, Oh, Jesus was a carpenter. And ne it never, never says Jesus was a carpenter. Well, you know, it was about Joseph. You know, Joseph was a carpenter and all that. Yeah, but he said, I'm about my father's business, which his father's business is the temple. We got the 13 silent years of Jesus that the Holy Spirit says, Shh, don't say a word. And then from 13 months To 30, shh, don't say a word.
The only thing we get is Jesus at the Passover at 13. And then the Baptists and, and their scholarship and their great knowledge. Oh, this is what happened. This is what happened. This is. And the Catholics with their tradition. You know, this is. I think when we get to heaven, if it's revealed to us, it may not be. We might be finding completely opposite, completely different of the life of Jesus as a boy. You think he was well liked? Well, all they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. You know Jesus lived godly in, Jesus, in the Father. Have I become your enemy because I've told you the truth, Paul said? Uh, Jesus would tell the truth. You think Jesus was really great with his classmates? You really think that they really just loved the, the brain of the whole class? Who, who got a hundred on all the tests? Especially history? Don't you think? Now, now listen, I'm throwing stuff out there. I don't know. But I'm just saying this assumption. Could, couldn't you just think that, that in the family of Mary and Joseph and their, and their sons and daughters that they had, I don't care what the Catholic Church says. The Bible says they she had sons and daughters. Can you just imagine they got sick and tired? I mean, I'm going to throw things out there like people throw out there. Why can't you just be like your older brother Jesus? Would Jesus do that? Huh? What about it? And going to back to the carpenter here, the carpenters, my grandpa was a carpenter. My grandpa, I can go back, and it's funny because some of the things I can't remember no more, but uh, there are fire stations, there are churches, there are buildings that my grandpa as a, as a carpenter helped build. My hands, my, my, the hands of my grandpa was in building that building. My grandpa and my uncle Joe went into their own business. I remember the, some of the houses they did. They painted, they did roofs, they did gutters, they did drywall, they did all this work. Some of those houses, I, I, if they're still there, I can say, that's where grandpa worked on the roof, that's where... There's a motel in Groton, and my grandpa was, was helped. I mean, if you mess up the doors and you, you mess up the walls and all that, my grandpa was hired to go in there and fix the place up. I even spent nights in that same hotel. And I chose that hotel because grandpa worked in it. And I'm trying to say to you, the carpenter is, <clears throat> they also involved... Furniture making, cabinetry, anything that had to do with the work of wood. So we got a vast occupation here of carpenters. Why are they carpenters? I don't know. Why are they not blacksmiths? <laughs> I don't know. And there are even some that would say that that was even in the, the realm of the black man. Uh, my Bible has a note here. Uh, let's see. 20. It says, Carpenters were designed skilled artists. Blacksmiths, if the horns were iron. We don't know. We don't know what the horns are. Were they ram's horn? Were they deer horn? Were they iron? Were they steel? And if it's a relation to the carpenters and the horns, so you don't put the, you didn't put the two together. Then said I, Zachariah. What come these to do? 
Zachariah's got the great thing. He's always asking a good question. What's this? What's that? What are they doing here? And he's got to the point, you know, what does he say? What has Zachariah learned so far? What comes these to do? Every time he saw something, every time it's been explained by the angels, there is a purpose. So four carpenters show up, Zachariah, okay, why, what are they going to do? There's been no vision that's just, oh, we'll just have a vision, get it over with it, and put it in the newspaper and stuff like that, put it in the magazine, put them on the talk show. That's not, there is a purpose, there is a method to God in these visions. And Zechariah has acknowledged that. And he spanked saying, these are the horns that have scattered Judah. Okay, Mr. Angel, you now confuse me again. I think we need to get a better angel down here, because this angel is really messes me up. Because it says, I see four horns. And he says, what are these horns? He said, they scattered Judah, Israel, Jerusalem. Okay, boom, got it. Maybe it's an animal, and it's like pushing them. Okay, got that. Maybe. He said, are they wood? Are they animal? Are they steel? Are they, uh, what, what, what kind of horn? The, the altars, the brazen altar, the golden altars in the tabernacle had horns. The horns on the brazen altar would be where you tied your sacrifice. That was brass. Okay, so these horns scattered Judah, Israel, Jerusalem, verse 19. I see four carpenters. All right. What are they? These come. Have a minute. Excuse me. 21. These are the horns. Wait a minute. They're carpenters. There are four horns. They scattered Judah, Israel, Jerusalem. Four carpenters show up, and somehow they pick up these horns, and they're using them to scatter Judah. Explain it. Uh-uh. I can't. I don't even know what the four horns are. At least Daniel told us it was a ram's horn. It was a goat's horn. It was a brazen altar Moses told us, a horn that Moses told us. Mr. Angel that works with Zechariah, what is it? It's four horns. And more help. What's oh, wait a minute? What's that? It's four carpenter. Wait, a minute, I'm still working on the horns here. Now it's okay for Zach, right? He whatever it is he 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 sees the horn and he knows what kind of horns they are. To the readers of the, now, I don't know what the modern Bibles do. We're not going to go. Go with the modern Bible. I don't care. They're, they're lies. I hope they didn't fill in the blanks to tell us what we don't know. Okay, so they, these are the horns, uh, the four carpenters, that scattered Judah, purposely Judah. Well, Judah was scattered by Nebuchadnezzar's Babylonian army and the Chaldees. The two right off the bat, we know that. Maybe Esau, but I mean, I don't know where we get the other two from. So that no man did lift up his head. What's that? You got to ask Jesus. 
Jesus is not around. I know, Scripture is Scripture. He said there, there were these two men, they went to the temple. They didn't go to church, they went to the temple. He said one, one kneeled there, or I mean, one stood there, and he bowed his head and smote his chest and said, Lord God, be, something, be merciful to me, a sinner, or something like that. And the guy's humble. We're not better than the second guy. We're not interested in the second guy or the first guy. But this guy, he, he, he's, he's humble. He, he's before a holy and righteous God. Even I, when I pray, I, I can't look my head up. And sometimes I force my head to look up. I don't want to lift my head up because I don't feel I'm right to lift my head up. Because I've failed God. I've sinned against God. Even though I put my sins under the blood and I'm speaking to God, my, I don't want to lift my head up. I'm going to assume that this is what it is. They're, 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 they're sins and iniquity and they're guilty and they can't lift their head up. And Okay. But these are come to fray them. All right, okay, if it's the carpenters, fray is to fight, to make scared. How does a carpenter do that? Coming at you with a saw and a hammer? I'm not trying to make jokes here. I'm just saying. The horns have scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. Then we go into the carpenters, and it, it's directly pointed at Judah. And Judah can't even lift their head up. And then the carpenters, it looks like, show up. And they're there to make you scared, make you afraid. Don't you dare run that to Jesus being a carpenter's son-in-law, because they weren't afraid of Jesus. On that kangaroo court that last night, and he stood before the Sanhedrin. They were beating the crap out of him. They were whipping him. They were, they were spitting upon him. They were pulling his beard. They weren't afraid of him. Don't you tell me the Roman government, Roman government, they put that purple robe, I don't care what the movie said, to the mock him. Oh, you're a king? Here's his robe, Mr. King. Here's your reed, Mr. King. You're, you're a septic. Or, oh, Mr. King, you need a crown? Here's a crown of thorns and whop it upon his head and make him bleed. Make, okay, almighty king, almighty king, almighty king. All right, take the take it off and give him his own clothes and march him off to the cross, carry him off the cross, strip him dark naked as, as a human being could be naked that Jesus was a male his mother was there last time his mother had seen him like that she was changing his diaper the disciple that Jesus loved there he is looking at his the one they lean on his bread naked come on if you're gone come on off the cross we'll believe who you are who do you think man they didn't fear him They'll fear him the second time, but he's not coming back as a car burner the next time. What is the carpenter? What is the carpenter to the story? I don't know. Get yourself a pencil. A big question mark. Point. To cast out the horns of the Gentiles. Now, are those horns of the Gentiles, are they the horns of the, verse 18? If they are one in the same, then it could be at least, at least Babylon, Assyria, and the Chaldeans. Remember, the Chaldeans were, were not Babylonian. They overtook the Babylonians. And they also gone in cahoots with the Assyrians. See how much we learn studying the Bible? Which lifted their horn. That would be pride. That would be, look who we are. 
I mean, the Vikings would have the horns on their heads. And like I said, horns in the Bible, nothing is their power. Look at me. Look. And it, it's pride. They lifted up their horn over the land of Judah to scatter it. Got to be the Syrians, the Babylonians, and the Chaldeans. Who the fourth one is, I don't know. If that's the correct thing. All right, let's go in more deeper. Chapter 2. I lifted up my eyes again. I mean, he is Master Zachariah. <laughs> and look, and behold, a man. Now we had a man that was riding a, ho a red horse, and not the same. But he became the man among the myrtle trees. So remember, get ready. They're not the same. I'm just saying. This is this is like before, and we got. With a measuring line in his hand. Now what it is, this is a rope or a thread. And it's got measurements on it, knots, and maybe die. We would we would have a yardstick or a tape measure today. Then I said, Whither goest thou? Now here goes Zachariah again. He there is a purpose, there is a reason. This guy is going somewhere. And he said unto me, now here's the man answering, to measure Jerusalem. You know how many times that Jerusalem is measured in the Bible? You think God would measure Washington, D.C.? L.A.? I don't think so. To see what the breadth is and what the length is. No height. Behold, the angel that talked with me went forth. Okay, now here comes here's the angel. And the angel's been no help at all. I'm sorry. Okay? And another angel went out to meet him. So you got the man with the measuring line. If it's not the angel himself. You got Zechariah and here's another angel. Zechariah. Jacob who, who was renamed Israel. And John the book of Revelation. They're the ones with angels. Don't go buy the store, the New Age book store section. Oh, I'm going to buy this thing about angels. They don't, they don't know nothing about angels. And said unto him, Who? An angel that talked with me went forth, and another angel went out to meet him, the angel, and said unto him, The angel's talking. Run. Speak to this young man. Who is the young man? He says, Zachariah. Okay, that's fine. But there was a man with a with a measuring lunch. He could have been young. And this is where you're going to get all messed up. You're getting another Bible. Saying. Jerusalem shall be inhabited. Now, here we go. As towns without wall. I read that. I read that. I read that. I said, wait a minute. Is said, even Jerusalem today has walls. Ezekiel said Jerusalem's going to have walls. But it didn't say. It says, as a town without walls. There's an example. There is a typology. There is a figurative expression. 
The towns had no walls. The cities did. For the multitude of men and cattle thereof. And what we get from this is Jerusalem one day is going to be, the gates are going to be open. And there's going to be just men and cattle and women and children just coming and going in and out over. And listen, Jerusalem today is a vast population. And I've I seen these videos of people showing me when they're having the gay pride month and they're out there in Jerusalem marching with the, the rainbow colors and their sodomite and all the just wickedness. There's a lot of people there. Wickedness. Can you imagine the time that Zechariah and Haggai and, and uh, Ezra and Nehemiah? And when Ezra and Nehemiah tells us how many people went, that's not a lot of people. And it just came to my head to think about how many people were there and to put it with how many people are mentioned in both places in the book of Numbers. I wonder what those numbers would be. I just thought of it. Were there more people that Moses was told to poll the people in Numbers than there were the amount of people that had returned to Jerusalem in Judah under Ezra and Nehemiah. I just, that would be interesting. But I'm trying to say is not many. Daniel didn't go back. His name is not in the list. Ezekiel didn't go back. His name is not. you think they would mention Daniel and Ezekiel. You'd think, hey, Shadrach, Meshach, Indigo. But their names are not mentioned. Ezra got upset. He's about ready to go. He's got everything going. He's like, where's the Levites? Well, will you go get the Levites? We need the Levites here. They can't stay. So the fact is, in Jerusalem right now, there's no temple. Now they're half building the temple. And by what we read in Haggai, their heart's not in it. And there are probably not a lot of people in, in Jerusalem. The fact is that the enemies come up, Nehemiah. Nehemiah doesn't really give us a lot of people who built the walls and the gates and the tower. And what God is saying to Zechariah right now, there's coming a time that this city is going to be loaded with people, loaded with cattle. Loaded with sheep. How do you know this is future? For I, saith the Lord, will be unto her a wall of fire, that's Jerusalem, round about, and will be the glory in the midst of her. That's second advent. That's millennium. That, that, pillar of fire that guide them into the promised land. Now they're in the millennium under Jesus Christ. has now become a fire around the city. That fire, the Bible says, our God is a consuming fire. That fire that when Elijah was raptured up to heaven were these horses of fire. The fire is coming from the angry Jesus at the second advent. The fire that God said, Jesus said, God said, that hell was, was made for the devil and his angels, and, the, and hell is just quite frequently mentioned as a place of eternal fire. So all your wizardry, all your idolatry, all your imagery, all your Hollywood -y, all your, your your monsters and goblins and gobbers and doobers. And all the main things is they gotta have something with a fire. 
Zeus has that pool of water that looks down to the earth. He puts his hand in there and it comes out as fire. Satan comes down at the end of the millennium and fuck, <laughs> there goes your army. Ends up in the lake of fire. The lake of fire prevents all those iniquity, all those rebellion, all those who have sided with Satan, the devil, the old serpent, everybody that has gathered with and sided with Satan. You ain't touching my people no more. I'm going to protect New Jerusalem. I'm going to protect the new heavens. I'm going to protect the new earth. Hey, listen, when God kicked Adam and Eve out of that garden, he put a fiery sword, a rotary sword with a cherubim there. Don't you come back. How do you know heaven is secure? Because all those are against God, all those that hated God, you're in the fire and you ain't coming out. Ask the rich man in hell and, and, and Abraham. Hey, there's a great gulf between us and you can't cross it and I can't cross it. I got lost family in hell. I can't go over to see them. I got lost friends in hell. They're not going to come over and see me. What's protect? Fire. When Dorothy and the, and the Scarecrow and the Lion and the, whatever the other guy was, when they came to Oz, he had fire. He was at the Emerald City. And these idiots said, well, you know, we're going to take back the rainbow. We're going to, uh, the Bible says the rainbow in Revelation, the only place where it mentions rainbow, is a rainbow that's around the throne of God and it's green. It's emerald. Stop worrying about the rain, the rainbow, which is a bow in Genesis, the King James Bible, King James Believer. Let's just worry about getting the gospel out. Let's tell people about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Okay? That's reading your Bible. 